video where I'm going to be talking to you about um, being environmentally friendly and uh, how designers have, and engineers have to think a little bit differently to make sure that they don't use up resources. So we talk about this usually as the six R's. Okay, so we've got reduce, rethink, refuse, recycle, reuse and repair. Uh, I'm going to talk to you briefly about each one of those for the next, let's call it six minutes. Um, and then we're going to go through a couple of questions and some examples about how you might answer those questions. All right, so please make sure you're focusing um, and pause it where necessary to make sure that you've got all the information that you need. So let's start on those six R's. These always come up in exams. You're always expected to write. And normally this is one of your evaluate questions, which would be worth six, eight marks possibly. Um, usually with a focus on a particular product, which is what we're going to do later on today. All right, so let's talk about reduce. Okay. Uh, how can the amount of materials and components used in the product be reduced? Is the product itself necessary? Could we remove that part, or maybe a component could be removed, um, which would greatly reduce the amount of materials used? Um, could the quantity of the materials be re reduced? And how could you do that? That might be something like uh, removing the thickness of the material. So you might shave off a couple of microns in the card weight. Or if it was uh, metal, maybe you remove a couple of the struts which support it. You'd do some calculations, make sure it's still strong enough, but then you would reduce the amount of material needed. That would save on cost, but equally that would save on the amount of material you need to um, create in the first place. Um, so reduce. Can we reduce the amount of material used in the product? Rethink. Could the design of the product be changed? Very often we go, well, that's how it looks, that must be the way it works. But actually, if you have a bit of a rethink, maybe about a different fastening technique or a different um, clamping technique or a different uh, way of stabilizing something, you can rethink the way the entire product works and maybe do away with some of the components or maybe come up with a completely different solution that might be better for the environment. Um, you know, look at the problem again. Maybe, maybe forget what you're trying to design and think, right, what is the problem? And can I solve that in a completely different way than anything that exists at the moment? That might be new technology, it might be new materials. Um, what alternative ideas are out there? What are other people working on? You can share ideas and, and brainstorm, which would be quite useful. Um, refuse, now I quite often have this one at the end. Uh, should the product be produced if it's not sustain sustainably designed? Um, equally, we might maybe would refuse to use it if it's not been created ethically. So maybe it does damage to the environment, maybe it's using materials which we know are not good for the environment um, or the way that they're produced, such as mining or refining, maybe we want to do away with. Maybe we refuse to buy those products, we refuse to buy plastic bags, we'd rather use uh, paper or cotton fabrics instead. Okay, so that's something to think about. Then we've got um, uh, recycle. A recycle and reuse are often muddled up, so recycle really clearly is it made using recycled materials? And equally, could it be recycled at the end of its life? Uh, and we'll talk later on about how we talk, how we make sure things are recyclable really efficiently. Um, recycling is where you would take the material, you'd separate the products into its separate bits, you'd take the material and you would reprocess the, process that material into a new material. Okay, so it might be if it's a particular type of plastic or a polymer, you would chop it into little granules and you would reuse those again Okay, that would be recycling. It's not the same thing as, as reusing a product, which we'll talk about next. Okay, now reusing, in its most basic form, reusing is something like having a drinks bottle and refilling a drinks bottle, having a cereal carton and refilling that cereal carton. All right, so that's reusing, using something twice or five times or a thousand times. That's the best option with the product, reusing. Um, quite often we talk about reusing as being where we um, would use it as something else. So there are a couple of examples that you'll see later on about reusing. Uh, it might be that you use an old drinks bottle for a watering bottle, um, or it might be that you use an old um, bucket of paint and you use that as a cooking pot if you're in a developing country. So those are examples of reusing, okay? Taking the product, using it in a different way, but not chopping it up and using that as a material again, all right? Um, repair, now I think this is one of the key bits. When we're working as designers and engineers, can we repair the product? And a lot of that will come down to, are we able to disassemble it? Are we able to take it apart um, and fix a component? And really that's the key. When we're talking about good design these days, we're talking about, can it be repaired? Can it be fixed and made good for the next thing? Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide, hopefully. 
Right, now these are the questions that you've, you may have seen before. I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the three questions with the red marks available. We've got a six mark question, an eight mark question, and a six mark question. Now these are ones that have come from an exam paper or two that I've looked at, and I think these are really important to get right. Okay, so um, if we look at the first one, rethinking flat packed furniture. Right, now flat packed furniture or self assembly furniture, the giant of that is of course Ikea. And what you've got there is a company that makes furniture that could be um, sent through the post or it can be packed in boxes which are really easy to transport. Um, so we go, okay, so that's environmentally friendly already. So by inherently flat packed furniture has some good environmental um, qualities. But quite often it's made from materials which are maybe not so environmentally friendly. It could be MDF, medium density fiberboard, it could be spray painted. Um, could be given some plastic finishes and stuff. So it might not be quite as effective as we might first of all think. All right, so the question that we've got, describe three practical ways that a designer of flat pack furniture could be more environmentally friendly. Give full explanations for your answer. Okay, six marks. So we've got three points with three good explanations to get those six marks. Now obviously we're always asking you to use examples in your answers, so please make sure that you do that. Right. I've given you some starting points, I've done a little mind map on the sheet, I've given you some starting points to have a look at, uh, which maybe will help you along the way a little bit. So if I just click on those, I'm, I'll explain them slightly for you. Oh, sorry, I click the right button. Okay, label the materials for recycling. When you disassemble a product, if you know that it's made from polypropylene, if you know that it's made from mild steel, if you know that it's made from um, other materials, then we can do something to, to make that work better. Okay, by disassembling it and replacing it with, with a similar material, or we can disassemble it and recycle that material. Okay? Reduce the amount of materials required. So a flat pack furniture, he might decide, or she might decide, whoever the, the design engineer is behind it, might decide to remove some of that material, as discussed before, or maybe take a shelf out, or make it out of thinner materials. Standardised components. Now IKEA are brilliant at this, for, for their own uh, financial gain, really but they make the components so that one screw will fit multiple products, which means that they're not making hundreds and hundreds of different types of things. They're made for lean, efficient manufacturing, which means that they can uh, reduce the amount of waste, they can reduce the amount of time it takes, they can reduce the amount of energy, all of which are important environmental concerns. Uh, improved durability and with improved quality. Right Now, what I mean by that is that a durable product is a product that's going to last for longer. Now, if you buy a product and it lasts for three months, okay, now that possibly might be disposed of badly. If you buy the same product which is made to a better quality, it might last for three years or 30 years. Okay? And when it does eventually get disposed of, the amount of time that it's been in use for is great. Okay? If it's been lasting for three years or 30 years, because the amount of energy required to create that product in the first place is the same whether it lasts for three minutes, three hours, three days, three weeks, or three years, or 30 years. All right, so improved durability with improved quality. Also improved durability with better materials, of course. Use locally produced materials. Now, someone like IKEA is not gonna go down to um, Exeter and buy wood from the Exeter wood yard, the timber yard. They're gonna go and buy that from their normal suppliers, okay? But if you're a local company making flat pack furniture, or if you're a local company that's repairing flat pack furniture, Going and using your local companies means that those materials are coming from less distance, they're not being driven in multiple directions to get to you, they're coming from a, from a close radius. You're using less fuel and less energy to, um, to get hold of those materials. So use locally produced materials. Use natural materials and finishes. Okay, Quite often we're using uh, man-made or manufactured materials such as MDF and chipboard and stuff like that. But those contain resins and those contain um, quite a lot of energy in their manufacture. So if we use a natural material like pine or spruce, or we use a natural material like oak or ash or beech, okay, those can be uh, treated with, with much less energy and much less materials um, because they're already a strong product in their own right. When you're manufacturing boards, you have to add those resins in because they've got no strength to them, or they're not waterproof, so you have to add things to them. Those other natural materials are very often really good in their own right without any real finishing to them. Okay, So that's one way. Now I've started you off on this question. Flat pack furniture could be made even more environmentally friendly in the following ways. Okay, Now that's where you would use my bullet points that I've given you there as a starting point. Make sure that you explain. This is an improvement because. So you're explaining why that makes it better than it does originally. Okay. Now you might want to pause it at this point 
and answer those questions or have a bit of a think or review this section. Right, for me, next one. Design for disassembly, repair and recycle. Okay, so when you're taking something apart, you're gonna do one of two things with it. Hopefully, you're going to repair it. If you're not able to repair it, hopefully you're then gonna put it in for recycling in the correct bin, okay? Now, I've given you an example here of a Nexus 5. I've no idea what a Nexus 5 is, apart from the fact that it's a mobile phone. Um, I was searching for design for disassembly, and this is one of the first things that came up. Now, it's got a score, it's a 15-step process for this, to take it apart, 15 stages, to take the whole product apart. It resulted in a repairability score of eight out of 10. Now, eight out of 10, that sounds pretty good to me, and I don't know how that compares against other products, but if, if we are scoring repairability, that's how easy it is to disassemble and swap out a part, swap out a component. An example would be something like swapping out a phone screen. All right, um, very few tools and without huge amounts of glue. Now, sometimes if you're using an adhesive to join your components together, then that renders it either impossible to recycle or you have to process it in order to get to recycling. So that's worth thinking about, okay? So, design for disassembly, repair and recycle. Evaluate the impacts, the environmental impact of designing products such as a mobile phone for disassembly. Okay, so that's our question. We've got eight marks available. It's a really big one. It's an evaluate question. So you can work with pros and cons. You can say, we'll try this, however that might not work. We'll do this instead. Um, so evaluate, pros and cons. It's not always the absolute answer. Um, so let's have a look at what I've given you as some starting points. Reduce the amount of new materials required. What I mean by that is that if you can repair it, you're not having to make a whole new phone, you're not having to make a whole new can opener, you're not having to make a whole new car, um, because what you can do is you only need the materials that go into the component that you're replacing or repairing. Okay, so that reduces the amount of new materials required. The product lasts longer, we're not having to make a new one. Recycle the components. Now quite often, you'll see this in garages quite a lot, you'll see this in, in TV repair companies and stuff. They'll take a the circuit board out of one component, one product, put it into another one. Okay, because sometimes different things fail in different ways. And so by recycling those components, okay, you can make that product work again. Now equally, recycled components could mean when you're evaluating that when you take it out, you've separated it into the right section. So it's, it's metal or it's electronics or it's polypropylene, and then it gets recycled back into a new material. Okay. Repair or replace components. I talked about that a little bit a minute ago. I was getting carried away. Um, repair or replace components. And what that means is that you swap things out. You don't always kind of throw the whole thing away. You replace the bit that's broken. Again, a mobile phone screen would be a good example of that. Um, a part in an engine would be good for that. Um, maybe if you're talking about architecturally or building wise, you might talk about replacing a leaky seal around the roof or something. Okay. Uh, increase the usable life of the product. Now that goes back to where we were talking earlier about improving the quality of the product. Use materials that are gonna last longer. Use materials that are of better quality and build better. Weld it better. Use better fastenings. Don't use, you know, use things which are forged rather than cast. Use things which are turned rather than um, plastic moulded. You know, you, you choose the component that's of better quality. It will last longer. You're after the maximum possible lifespan for a product to be environmentally friendly. Use fastenings that make it easy to take apart. Now. I've referred to this previously on, on, a, on another area, using adhesives and using pop fittings which prevent it from coming apart without drilling them out or levering them out with a screwdriver, um, that means that that product is not designed for disassembly. If we design a product for disassembly, we're gonna use screws and we're gonna use fastenings that have a little tab that can, can release the component or it'll have components which are held together using friction um, or interference fits where they just kind of connect. That's where we're gonna be looking at um, using better fastenings, basically, okay? Label materials for recycling. Now, this is, this is by law now with, with a lot of products, uh, uh, particularly things like the automotive industry. Um, they're expected to label all of their components, particularly the polymers, um, to say whether they are a polyamide, which would be nylon, whether it's polypropylene, or whether it's acrylonitrile, butadiene, stone, whatever the, whatever the polymer is, they have to put a little, they'll have seen the little um, triangle with the arrows and the number in it. That tells the manufacturer or the recycler what particular polymer that is. So when they're sorting it in the, in the recycling chain, it goes to exactly the right uh, area and gives them the right quality of material, okay? 
Um, so that's the end of design for disassembly, repair and recycle. So if I was writing this as, as an example, I would say by making a product suitable for disassembly, it is possible to sort the components properly, sort the materials properly. So you use my starting points that I've given you there as examples, okay? Um, and then you follow that up with another improvement. So remember what you're doing here is you get eight marks by evaluating. Point out the downside of it, point out the time and the energy and the cost it's gonna to take to disassemble a product as opposed to binning it, all right? Right, deforestation. Um, you'll probably do things like this in geography, you'll probably do things like this in morals and ethics where we talk about um, society and people. Um, deforestation is a bit of a, a hot topic because uh, we know when we talk about trees, we often say, well, those create the oxygen in our atmosphere that allow us to breathe. Okay, and that's a really, really good reason not to chop all our forests down. I can't think of a better one. Um, they take our carbon dioxide out and they replace it with oxygen. They also do what we call sequester, they hold carbon. Okay, which means that it's not out in our atmosphere, it's not creating a, a greenhouse effect. Um, so, so holding the carbon is really important. That's what forests do for us. But they're a great source of natural materials. If you think about you know, in most countries, um, one of your, your basic building materials is going to be timber. It's going to be wood. Um, so we're going to inevitably chop some trees down. The trick is to manage that effectively, isn't it? And again, you've all talked about it, particularly with reference to things like toilet roll, where if you're going to chop down one tree, you plant five new ones. Right? So that's, that's something you're all familiar with. So um, deforestation is a big issue when it's done on a massive scale. And it's no surprise that very often that this is done in um, either developing countries or in communities where they've got such vast areas. Um, parts of Australia are being deforested quite quickly. Um, so they're not a developing country, but because they've got such vast areas that are owned by people, they're not protected. Um, or often we get things like illegal logging, or illegal work, uh, where people are sneaking in, they're chopping trees down, um, leveling great areas of forest and no one is able to stop them because they can't be caught. So deforestation is a, is a huge issue. Now that's, uh, it changes the landscape, it changes the, um, the, the fauna and flora that can live there, so the animals and the plants and stuff that live there. It's a really big issue in terms of thinking about the global food network and, and um, living network of animals and, and, and plants and stuff. We're doing an irreparable damage if we don't manage that carefully, okay? Now on the slides I've shown you some, some pretty um, extreme pictures. At the moment, I've, I've included a picture of an orangutan. It's not the key um, of deforestation, but it's a hot, it's a, it's a big topic at the moment because of palm oil production. Um, where those orangutans are living in Borneo, their their habitat, where they live, is being completely removed uh, in order to plant palm oil, palms for palm oil. Um, so the, the landscape is changing. It's going from one sort of tree to another sort of tree. Unfortunately, it's not one that the orangutans would want to live in. Okay, so it's a form of is. is it's intensive agriculture, growing these palms for the palm oil that we all want in our products. Look on the ingredients, you'll see it. Okay, so yeah, let's go on to the, let's go on to the, the mind map. Okay, describe deforestation and the impact this has on the environment. Okay, so the impact it has is what it does. Good point, bad point. You've got six marks, so we're gonna be looking for a minimum of three points with three good explanations. You could always do more, give yourself a spare. All right? Um, so, describe deforestation, the impact it has on the environment. Here are my starting points for you. It has an effect on plant diversity. It's all very well having plants, but are they the right plants that feed all the animals and, and um, create the mulch that's nutritious for the next batch of plants growing? So if it's all one sort of plant, it's not diverse, which means it's not good for our environment. Which has an effect on species diversity. Okay, diversity of plant species, but also diversity of animal and insect species, okay? Now those animals are the things that eat the seeds and uh, have their own families, they migrate from one place to another, they actually spread um, nature by, by their own movements. Now if we stop that, and if we, if we change their migration patterns, if we change their breeding and territorial patterns, they're gonna start to die out, okay? And that will stop us from having a, a, a good eco um, balance. Um, effect on soil and growing areas. So again, you know, if you if you remove all of the tree cover, you suddenly expose that area to wind and to rain and to sun, and that can lead to things like drought and soil erosion, where the soil gets washed away. Um, you can get deserts created where once there was there's sort of lush landscapes by removing the tree cover, which is really important. Okay. Um, 
effect on the atmosphere. We've talked about it already. The, the, the trees are the lungs of our planet. Um, so those plants and trees, if they're not absorbing our carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen, then we're going to start to be in trouble with our, with our um, global uh, atmosphere. Effects on the available resources. Okay? Now, if you're not able to build your um, trees from local materials, okay, then well, because they've all gone, then you have to start looking at other things and you probably start importing stuff. So if you're, if you're part of a, a group of people that have always lived there and have always built using these, these timbers and suddenly you can't, um, you've got a real issue. So um, the effects on the available resources can be a real challenge. And that includes like growing food and stuff like that as well. Um, you need to give an explanation about why it's happening. Okay? Uh, you need to, in your, in your answer, you need to say why people do it. And that's things like uh, jobs, it employs people, people who are loggers. They're not, out, they're not evil people, they're people with families. And uh, you need to tell the story about why they're doing it, why it's important to them to make a, make a buck. Okay? You need to talk about big companies who are making money. And they're making money uh, globally because they're making products that we want. So remember we've got that refuse idea where we refuse to buy something. Well, palm oil containing products are one of our issues and they, they're the result of deforestation. Um, so give lots of explanations about why it's happening. Okay, don't just sort of accept that the examiner always knows what you mean. Okay, so my starting point is for you. The impact of the environment from deforestation is quite severe. For example, okay, so that's where you might talk about um, the rainforest. This is significant because, and that's where you might talk about carbon in, carbon dioxide in, oxygen out. Okay, so that's my kind of starting point for you in terms of those six R's and relating them specifically to deforestation um, and recycling and reusing. Okay, so hopefully that's been quite useful. Cheers, bye.